This is Twit. Uh, why don't you give us the 30,000 foot view? What problem is this solving? So um, this problem is sol- uh, this project is solving the problem that uh, the open source uh, Linux graphics stack doesn't really have um, all of the important bits that the Android graphics stack has. So there are some parts of the Android graphics stack that simply have no open source equivalent. And that's where this part fits in. It enables uh, your uh, your uh, graphic stack to be more more efficient when uh, dealing with uh, graphics buffers. Now, is this only going to be useful when I've got like a desktop in it, or I mean, is is this replacing something in the Android stack? Um, so normally, the the Android stack. Um, has like an OEM supplied uh, uh, driver that's not open source, and it, uh, it contains this HWC component, um, and uh, that doesn't exist at all in the uh, uh, in the open source space. So if you want to run a fully open source Android uh, uh, graphic stack, uh, you need this component somehow. So it's for a desktop or a cell phone or any embedded application. It's wherever you'd you'd be using open source graphics drivers uh, and Android at the same time. And and where does a graphics driver fit in the process? I think it's somewhere below my application, right? Right. So there's sort of a stack, um, and uh, there's the kernel, and on top of that, uh, there's the the graphics driver. It partially lives in the kernel, partially lives in user space. Uh, and on top of that, there's the HWC part, uh, the hardware composer, which uh, in, in Android is um, done through a protocol called uh, creatively <laughs> HWC2. Uh, and that's then used to communicate with uh, um, the applications and uh, manage uh, the different parts or the different graphics buffers of, of uh, different applications so that they can coexist and also be rendered efficiently on, on, onto the uh, display buffers. Okay, so what what is this? Why is this, why is this proprietary on, on, on the standard uh, Android? Well, <laughs> hardware vendors um, um, typically feel like that uh, it's part of their special sauce. Uh, it's what makes their hardware special. But in reality, they all ship basically the same hardware. So they're not very eager to share the implementation of this stuff. Um, mm. But that doesn't mean there's no no need for, for an open source uh, implementation of this stuff. Uh, the open source graphics drivers don't really have an implementation for this. So... Uh, um, some uh, people uh, inside of Google, uh, Sean Paul and uh, Zach Reisner, decided to uh, uh, write DRM hardware composer um, in order to be able to use the open source graphics drivers. Now, would this be different then? Is are there variations of this for each of the different platforms? Um, so, yes, uh, the display hardware parts are slightly different, but the majority of the functionality is pretty much identical. So um, having a generic code base like DRM uh, hardware composer um, allows you to um, have the shared uh, functionality um, in one place and then just add uh, like the quirks for the, the specific hardware that's uh, different. Like uh, the Intel graphics or the Intel uh, um, display hardware might not support this or that uh, pixel format. Uh, so you might have to add like a quirk for that, um, and and that's um, what DRM hardware composer is is meant to do. It's just collect all this stuff in, in one place and enable um, everyone to use open source graphics drivers. And you said there are some guys at Google that started this and and are created the project. Yeah, this was uh, this project was started by Sean Paul and uh, Zach Reisner has also done a lot of work on it. Uh, it was initially a part of the. Um, Pixel C project, and it and it shipped on that hardware uh, since they were using uh, the uh, open source uh, NVIDIA graphics driver for that project. 